Vice President Kamala Harris visited the nations of Guatemala and Mexico recently. And I know it seems like a very long time since we've heard from VP Harris. I think the last time we really heard from her was when she told Joe Biden that he was the President of the United States of America. To which Joe Biden replied, But who is this? Camille? Jill! Jill! Jill, do we, do we know a Camille? No, I don't think it, this doesn't sound like your cousin, Camille. Jill! Jill, what's for dinner? Now, Kamala Harris has taken a background role to this presidency thus far. A lot of attention has been given to the old white man in charge. And that seems odd, considering the boasts from corporate media and the Democrats are about how diverse this cabinet really is, but mostly we just kind of hear from the white dudes in charge. Right, when it comes to foreign policy, it's primarily Anthony Blinken, and every so often they throw Lloyd Austin a bone, right? The, the black general who's in charge of the Pentagon. And I just want to be clear that in this case, all we see is proof that diversity can be used for expanding imperialism. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Kamala Harris, she is a cop. That's not an exaggeration. When she was the district attorney of California, she nicknamed herself Top Cop. You don't give yourself a nickname. Trust me, as a kid that's tried to come up with his own nickname, that's not how nicknames work. right? I tried to give myself the nickname of The Thunderdome, so that ladies would know that I was a badass, but also had to be in a dome because I was allergic to nature. Uh, yeah, that nickname turned into fuckface very quickly. Yeah, because you'd have to be a fuckface to give yourself a nickname. But Harris is the perfect VP for Joe Biden, the man that has dedicated his career to ensuring the maximum number of black people end up in prison so America can continue its long tradition of slavery and indentured servitude. Joe Biden's tough-on-crime stance is why we have mass incarceration, the prison industrial complex, and the ongoing war on drugs. And Kamala Harris continued that proud tradition, but she put a twist on it. She's going to be smart on crime. And sure, smart on crime sounds like cops are going to be beating criminals with huge textbooks, right? And according to cops, that's how you get the smartness into the perps. Okay, it's either that or you have to let the perp sleep on a textbook overnight so that the words can be absorbed into your head through the science of dream magic. But smart on crime policies included imprisoning mothers of truant children, withholding evidence to prevent the death of an innocent man, and as attorney general, she said that she can't close the prison industrial complex because we'd lose all that sweet, sweet, sweet prison labor. And Kamala Harris is the Joe Biden sequel that the duopoly is waiting for. She's basically the evil dean in every college movie. She voted against the legalization of hemp and marijuana because it serves the prison slavery complex. And she's responsible for more black kids to be put into the system for the harmless crime of skipping school. Hey, uh, Kamala, have you ever wondered why a kid might not want to go to school? I mean... As an immigrant kid, I can tell you that every day I was worried about being bullied and harassed for the color of my skin. I worried that the teachers won't say anything because the rich kids whose dad donates to the school can't be disciplined for dropping the new brown boy on the concrete during recess. But yeah, no, let's go ahead and punish the kid nervous about going to school by sending their moms to prison and orphaning them instead of addressing the racial and economic biases in the education system. In her most recent speech after vis her visit to Guatemala and Mexico, she said that the migration problem that the United States is facing is because of these Latin American countries themselves. She goes on to say that nobody actually wants to leave their homes and their families, but there's many reasons that people do leave their homes and move to a different location. In fact, that's what parents want for their kids. They want them to leave so that they can get back to having sex and walking around the house naked. Excuse me while I go vomit over that very true thought. Blah. Look, in my case, my family moved to the United States from India because my dad got a job, a new job here over two decades ago. 
But this is the model immigrant argument, right? And and this is the model immigrant that people like Kamala Harris want in the country. The ones that will work and not join a union or organize because that could mean the loss of employment and therefore the loss of their lives in the United States. The model immigrant is a lot easier to control and therefore are the friends of the U.S. empire, which as a reminder thrives on slavery and indentured servitude. Now, others leave the country because of violence, economic strife, or because of catastrophic climate disasters. In fact, Guata in Guatemala, CIA interference created a violent regime to, quote, protect U.S. interests. In the 40s, Guatemala had a revolution to remove a military dictatorship and elect a socialist to ensure that people would be taken care of. This New government put FDR-style New Deal policies in place to empower the working class of the country. And after the CIA interference, which was all about saving money on fruit exports, Guatemala faced income inequality and violence due to the repercussions of neoliberal capitalist policies. This is why there are people migrating to the United States. In Mexico, violence from the drug cartels is caused due to the illegality of cannabis in the states. In fact, the CIA is often caught aiding these cartels with running drugs into the U.S. But that's all fine and good with the architects of the failed war on drugs. The cycle of pain and trauma is good for the economy. And hell, if we legalize cannabis and cut these cartels off from their source of income, Big Pharma can come in and get these folks addicted on their drugs. And what is Big Pharma if not a legal drug cartel in the United States? Kamala Harris is blatantly ignoring the history of U.S. interference in Latin and South American countries to uphold U.S. interests yet again. In in one statement, she not only gaslit and erased 50 years of history for Latin and South America, but she also perpetuated one of the greatest acts of vi victim blaming ever seen on television. Kamala Harris is saying, Kamala Harris saying, uh, migration is the fault of the countries these immigrants are coming from is like blaming a rape victim for wearing makeup and a skirt. Harris claims that it's important to understand the root causes of these issues Yet, she doesn't address the violence the United States has inflicted upon these countries with their homicidal imperialist policies. She also says she wants, the US, she wants U.S. corporations and the government to work with Guatemala to help the people there. And since the history of imperial violence is erased from the speech, that basically means that they're going to either try to bully Guatemala into neoliberalism that only benefits U.S. oligarchs, or they'll be running a coup in Guatemala again to achieve the same results she also claims that the people have pride in where they're from but that doesn't really apply to u.s citizens that know the true history of their country and as a new u.s citizen of this nation i have buyer's remorse and i know there's going to be a bunch of folks out there that say well if you don't like it here then you can just go back to where you came from but look i'm here to tell you that you don't have to say that because kamala harris is saying that for you you know it, it, it's fun isn't it? it's fun whenever a politician uses academic language to validate racists it's a, it's a fun time it's a nice time Kamala Harris wants to set up an anti-corruption -cor task force in Guatemala. And if that's the case, then the first thing she would do is eradicate the CIA. The CIA is an organization whose motto, according to the former director of the CIA, Mike Pompeo, is to lie, cheat, and steal, which reminds him of the American experiment. And in this case, the American experiment is lying to the people cheating an election of a sovereign nation, and stealing their resources. And she refers to Mexico as America's first cousin, but boy, I, I don't remember stealing my first cousin's home and then blaming them for having their kids come to my house after I wrecked their house, but well, family's crazy, aren't they? They're just, they're just a bunch of kooks. Everybody's, everybody's got that one sociopathic family member that's always claiming that the world belongs to them, right? They all, there's always one in those family dynamics, aren't there? You know, there's always that one, that one that's hell-bent on taking over the world. 
Right? Right? We all have those in our families, right? Harris then goes on to blame the opioid crisis in America solely on Mexico letting China traffic fentanyl into the U.S. She completely ignores that it was the pharmaceutical companies that were sending more opioids to pharmacies across the U.S. and helping Americans in pain develop an addiction to their drug. And when the prices go up, they turn to the cheaper and stronger fentanyl. So again, the U.S. is responsible for opening a market for this drug to be used and abused within its borders. She then goes on to say that the Biden administration is the most pro-union administration in America. Wait, 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 more pro-union than FDR in 1935? Look, FDR signed the Wagner Act after a year of general strikes organized by socialist communists in the labor movement who were asking for better treatment hours and pay for workers in America. After public pressure, the Wagner Act legitimized unions and empowered the working class. Joe Biden has done nothing close to that. But in terms of supporting corporate unions that often side with the party over the workers, then yeah, actually, they are very pro-union. I mean, hell, the AFL-CIO admitted to running a shadow campaign to get Biden elected, and the American Federation of Teachers, or the AFT, went against science to open schools and put teachers' and students' lives in danger during a pandemic. The president of the AFC, AFT sits on the board of the DNC, so of course they're going to side with the party over the workers. And unions that side with political parties are not unions. They are the same as party bosses. She also talks about allocating millions of dollars to both Guatemala and Mexico for labor, agriculture, and women's empowerment issues. While that's great and dandy, the U.S. never gives money to any nation without wanting something in return. It's likely that the U.S. is trying to gain control of Guatemala's agriculture to help these corporations that Harris wants involved in Guatemala's future. This would allow them to export more food for far cheaper while maintaining income inequality in these nations. It is also likely that Harris is trying to implement her own North American Free Trade Agreement to help corporations legally use and exploit foreign labor. And this is likely a reaction to the American working class starting to respect themselves and not work for pittances. We recently saw a campaign where people didn't want to go back to work, not because they're lazy, but because minimum wage was so low in retail and service jobs that unemployment helps cover their basic needs. If, the, if, if Americans are going to demand and fight for increase in minimum wage, it's better to make a deal with Mexico to farm labor out to their country where they don't have to pay American minimum wages. She also uses the rhetoric of trickle-down economics, Harris claims that these investments will see an increase in the GDP of the American economy, which has grown by about 6%. Now, this has nothing to do with the quality of life of the working class, but everything to do with how much rich the rich are already getting in the U.S. And the working class will see a trickle of that growth because capitalism's prostate has enlarged so much that that's about really as much as it can get out. You know, the, it, it, you can't really get more than a, a trickle out of its decrepit, flaccid dong. My apologies for the nightmare fuel, but I think you get the point. In a 15-minute speech, Kamala Harris blamed all of America's problems with immigration, the war on drugs, and income inequality on Latin American countries. The top cop went down to the global south and said, hey, get your shit together, or we're coming to put you in prison. I mean, who said women can't be imperialist dictators hell-bent on global domination, huh? Oh, man, Kamala Harris is going to let all the boys have the fun with exploitation. She, she, she wants to have fun, too, because as that 80s song goes, you know, girls just want to have fun with exploitation it's that, that that's in the subtext if you listen to the music the music kind of says with exploit like it's in the musical like it's like the notes that you don't hear say that but you know girls just want to have fun with exploitation 
Look, Harris's argument revised the history of U.S. interventionism in Latin America and very academically used racism to take no accountability for the problems created by Manifest Destiny. She's proving why America is the police of the world and why it needs a top cop to achieve that goal. Harris is taking her experience of punishing victims from the state of California to the international stage so she can be the female face of imperialism. But it doesn't matter what gender, skin color, or ethnicity you put on imperialism. It'll be brutal, and it'll thrive on inequality. And that is what Kamala Harris represents. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button. Please make sure you share this out. And please make sure you are subscribed uh, to uh, whatever platform you are listening to or watching this uh, this dispatch on. If it's on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube because they often unsubscribe people. Uh, if you're watching this on Rockfin, I hope that you subscribe on Rockfin. I hope that you you make a free account, and if you're honest in a stable financial place, you become a uh, a, a, a premium member of of the Rockfin family, which I can uh, endorse more. Uh, if you're listening to this on Bandcamp, I hope you become a, a Bandcamp subscriber. And if you're listening to this on a podcast platform, then I hope that you become a subscriber on that platform as well. Uh, sharing and, and subscribing and leaving comments are, are ways that uh, that podcasts like this, independent podcasts like this, uh, get more viewers. They, they get seen by more people. We, we get more subscribers. Uh, and, uh, and, and stories like this reach more people people and and stories like this need to reach more people because anything anti-capitalist often gets suppressed by um you know the 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 corporate uh the corporate technocracy like youtube and facebook and twitter so uh, uh independent media very much depends on you guys to help get the word out that uh, i've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10. And every month, it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion. Or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email. And I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams uh, standalone videos or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do and then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand up comedy and storytelling content so tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member but if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre pandemic, but uh, because of the the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without uh, without the do without donations from you guys from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right, I've got 
uh, t-shirts, I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it, it's there, probably, kind of, uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com, uh, it's the merch tab, and, uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me, there's seven designs, uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up, I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on, um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate all, 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists, uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gasola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more, then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay what you want. Uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play. All of the all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate regularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that.